Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExecuteAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our Kubernetes for Testers course. And in this video, we'll be talking about understanding Kubernetes services. All right, so let's get started. Kubernetes pods are mortal. They are burn when they die, they are not resurrected. While pods get its own IP address, even those IP address cannot be relayed upon to be a stable over time. This leads to a problem. If some sets of pod provides functionality to other pods inside Kubernetes cluster, how do these frontend finds out and keep track of which pods backends are in that set? So as you can see, we saw in our previous video that if the pod is deleted for some reason or if the container is not working, then this part will be deleted automatically and in a matter of seconds there will be new pod created since pods are atomic. Since each pods have their own IP address and there are containers running in, inside them, it's always likely that if these pods are intercommunicating within the cluster and if the pod dies, then new IP address will be created and the communication between the pods will get disrupted because there are cases where we may be relying on one pod into another pod to perform certain operations. So if it is not very clear, this is how the pod communication is going to happen. So basically, as you know, in a real-time application, we will have front-end modules, something like this. And these front-end modules will be running on a container. Let's say in our case, we are going to run an Angular application on a container with the different IP addresses for each and every parts that we got. And there are backend parts which are going to serve the database connectivity for them, something like this. So these are the different parts intercommunication is going to happen. So as you can see, for every front-end parts, they all communicate with the backends using their IP addresses. And what if the IP addressed part, something like 10.71.45.38 dies for some reason? then new pod will be created instantly because as we know, Kubernetes world, everything will be taken care of automatically. If a pod dies, new pods will be created automatically, but the IP address will not be the same that what it has got right now. So instantly, new IP address will be created for a new pod which is going to be created. And what happens is all the communication which was happening between the 10.60.45.36 pod with the backend 10.71.45.38. So in order to avoid this problem, service comes into picture. A Kubernetes service is an abstraction which defines a logical set of parts and a policy by which to access them, sometimes called as microservices. The set of parts targeted by the services is determined by the label selector. And once again, don't worry about the label selector yet. We'll be discussing about that next. So this is what Kubernetes services does. It's an abstraction which defines a logical set of parts and a policy by which to access them. So it is going to be something like this with the parts communication with services. So the same parts that we saw before is going to be here with all the UI based containers running with all the front end applications running something like this. And these are the backend services, which is going to serve data for the front end. But this time, they are not going to directly communicate with each other. Rather, they are going to be communicating with what is called as a service. As you can see, this time, the service has its own IP address, like 10.30.50.100. And all the parts are going to be communicating not directly with the backend parts. Rather, they'll be communicating with the services, something like this. As you can see, this time, all the parts knows that this is the one point service where it has to communicate with so that it can reach the backends, something like this. So they will all communicate with the service to start communicating with the backend. So for some reason, if any one of the part dies, the backend part dies, no problem in here because the service will remain there for communication. So services are going to act like a load balancer and also it's going to be like a one point contact for all the different parts so that they can communicate with the parts with reliability. So that's the main purpose of the parts itself. And we're talking about something called as the label selector in our previous slide. So the label selectors are the labels that are key value pairs that are attached to the objects such as parts. 
and labels are intended to be used to specify identifying attributes of objects that are meaningful and relevant to user, but do not directly imply semantic to the core system. Labels can be used to organize and to select subset of objects, and labels can be attached to the object at creation time and subsequently added and modified at any time. And if this theory is so confusing, in diagrammatic view, the labels letter is going to look something like this. As you can see, each service is going to have a certain labels in them, and the label here we got is something like dev and 1.0, and you can see that there is a corresponding parts with the same label as 1.0 and dev for the backend parts. And if you feel like there is a new version coming in, you can straight away attach another label like 2.0 in the service. So these two parts will get obsolete because they don't really match the criteria of the service because this will be 2.0 while you create a new label in here. And these two parts will not comply with the new label in here. So basically label act as a selector to query which part matches the label that it has got. So if you have another part with 2.0 and def, then automatically the service will redirect the lower to that particular part instead of these two parts. So these two parts are gonna be like an old parts, whereas the 2.0 part is gonna be the new part and the service will be communicating to that if you specify this service with 2.0 in here. So that's the power of the whole label concept itself. But while we start working with the services and we'll start creating the services, we'll see how we can use the power of labels. And finally, publishing services. So for some parts of your application, for example, the front ends, you may want to expose a service onto an external IP address. So Kubernetes service types allows you to specify what kind of service you want. The default is cluster IP though, but there are different kinds of service types available like load balancing and node ports and something like that. But the one which we are going to discuss in this whole course is going to be the node port. So the node port exposes the service on each node's IP at a static port, which is nothing but the node port, a cluster IP service to which the node port service will route is automatically created. So this is something which we'll be using in our Selenium grid and node setup while we will be exposing the node port of the service so that this is going to be accessible from the outside world, from the outside cluster, and we can manage and see what's really happening within the cluster and we can see all the log information from there. So while we start creating the service, you will understand what this node port is all about. So we'll be discussing what is labels, what is node port, and how to access the service from the outside world, and how we can make use of the service to be available for all the different kinds of parts within our cluster. So we'll be discussing more about the service creation in our upcoming videos while we start creating one. And since this is a basic video, we are not really going to be talking a lot about the service at this point. I know it's kind of confusing by now. So we will be discussing about deployments in our next video and then we'll start creating the service and we'll see how we can leverage the power of service in creating one and then accessing the service with different parts and we can extend the same concept with our Selenium grid in our upcoming videos of this course. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.